welcome back YouTube. Welcome to Tool Tip Third Day. What we're going to do on this segment is I'm going to show you new tools, new diagnostic tools, new specialty tools, show you how they work, how to use them, and when you might want to use them. Today's cool tool is a logic probe. It's very similar to a test light in a lot of ways. The biggest difference comes from the fact that it's powered by the vehicle's battery, as you can see by these two clamps here. And the other thing that make, that sets it apart is that it actually has two lights in it. One's going to be for positive, one's going to be for negative. This draws a lot less current and can show you a lot faster signal happening than a, than a normal test light will. And it's handy for use on computerized control circuits that would you could possibly cause damage to using a standard test light due to the amperage draw of that standard light bulb. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and hook this up and I'll kind of show you what it looks like when you're when you're measuring it. So if you got a negative signal you're looking at that's flashing or you just need to check for the the existence of a ground, you would see a green light. If it's positive side switched or some sort of power feed that you're looking to verify then you might get a red light. So what I've done here is uh, I had to work on a vehicle the other day that had a no start condition and it ended up being the ignition coil. This is what I used to figure it out pretty quickly and I'll show you how I did that and how you rule it out. So we'll just go ahead and say because this is a running vehicle I've disabled some stuff so it doesn't start. But this is a running vehicle. I know it has fuel pressure. I know that it has fuel injection. And I know that it does have spark. It's not going to inject fuel while I'm cranking for demonstration purposes. But I'll show you what was happening on the other vehicle. So I knew that it had fuel because I could smell it. So I disabled the fuel pump. And at that point I had verified that I had, I had no spark at the plugs, I had no spark at the coil wire which would rule out distributor cap and rotor and anything of that sort and knowing that I had fuel means that my in that vehicle that the distributor pickup and the crank position sensor were working so without getting too much into detail on how you'd run down the list of, of diagnostics on that I knew everything was working except for the ignition so once you get to that point or if you're looking at uh, a possible injection system issue, you're wanting to verify the computer's doing what it's supposed to, that's really where these come in handy. And they're only like 30 bucks. They're not very expensive. They can save you a lot of time and hassle. So, on to the simulated diagnosis here. So we'll say we've got a faulty ignition system. Uh, first thing you want to do is check for a power. You, you want to check to make sure you have power to your ignition module, to your ignition coil and we'll start from there. So what we've got going on here is you're going to see here's my positive side for my coil. You'll see we do have a power feed. So we've got power, right? Go ahead and connect this. One thing you might notice too is if you're checking for a power feed it's going to show it on both sides of the coil. So don't be alarmed by that. These usually only have an ohm and a half or so. There's really not going to be a whole lot of voltage drop on on both sides of that. Um, so at this point, you know, the coil is off because if it was on, you'd have red on one side and green on the other. So another thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we can, since we know we have power feed, we want to see that the ignition module or the ECU is switching the coil off by grounding one side of the coil. So I can isolate that by disconnecting this wire here. Which, on a newer vehicle, you would just unplug the coil and uh, back probe it with some T-pins, which I'll show you. This is a T-pin. If you ever sewn before, you know what it is. And go get them for a couple bucks at the, you know, the uh, sewing section at Walmart. So, and what you would do with this is you'd take a, you know, a connector like this, and to keep from front probing it and potentially spreading the terminal inside, and and main, you want to maintain your your connection integrity. You would actually put it in the back, 
and on like a weather pack connector like see I think I have an extra one on this harness here this was converted to fuel injection so some of the old carburation system is uh, still intact so this is a weather pack connector and you'll see I can slide this right in the back here so what you've done there is you've effectively probed that without damaging the front of the connector. So you'd put a T-pin in the back there and you'd touch the probe to it. But that's not what we're doing. So what I'll do is I'll show you. We had power feed. We want to check the signaling of this coil. We want to see it actually ground the coil. Um, when it's grounded, the coil's on. The spark happens when the coil's turned off, when the ground is taken away. And so that magnetic field drops, that's when the spark happens. So I'll demonstrate that now. You'll see that you should see the green light flashing. So in this case, knowing that we have a good cap and a good rotor, and we weren't getting spark to the, to the end of the coil wire, to the plug wires, you know, you've tested spark at the coil. At this point, you could rule out the coil, which I know mine is good, so we're not worried about that. But that shows you that you could really run through your ignition system or your injection system and start to rule out possibilities of... You can basically... process of elimination can happen quickly with one of these, is the point I'm getting to. So, if you do any kind of automotive diagnostics, if you have older vehicles, if you have really any interest in working on cars something like this might be handy they're not expensive like i said i think i've spent like 30 bucks on this at the parts store probably get one cheaper on amazon or something um, but i thought the, this was a pretty handy tool i figured i'd share it with you and i'm going to continue sharing handy tools with you because i've learned quite a bit about how to use some of these tools over the years i'm going to wrap up uh, this tool tip third day so go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's any tools you want to see that you think I might have or you want me to get. Uh, and until next time, see you later.